Hello friends, as you know, I am now starting the ketogenic diet, but before I get into that really quick, I want to do a little bit of follow-up on my three-day fast. Just wanted to answer a few questions at the beginning and talk about some things that it was just, there was too much, the video was too long, and so I didn't include them, but I'm going to talk about them now. Question one, a lot of people want to know what I did to take my mind off of food. I'm a very busy person. I have a very long to-do list, always and forever. So I just worked on my list and tried to get done as many things as possible. I also went on a few long walks. Exercise is an appetite suppressant, although I don't recommend exercising any like more intensely than a long walk. But a long walk while fasting should be fine. Also, the carbonated water, that's really what got me through. Question number two, a lot of people also really wanted to know how my levels of fatigue were. I was pretty fine on day one and two, but about halfway through day three, I really started to fade and I started to get really tired and feel really fatigued and not super lightheaded, but just not very grounded. But yeah, I didn't experience that like really great clear-minded feeling that a lot of people talk about and I was actually pretty disappointed by that. Question number three, someone asked how often you should do a prolonged fast. I think if you're doing like a three-day fast, doing it once a month should be okay as long as you're healthy and your body can handle it. So I told you guys that the day after breaking my fast, I felt like pooping my pants all day. That was pretty rough and I was pretty much only saved by the cheese. Like there was nothing else that I could really stomach and I just ate a lot of cheese. Which I was really excited about because I thought that that meant that I definitely wasn't lactose intolerant because I hadn't had any dairy in like months and then I fasted for three days and all of a sudden I could eat all of this dairy but then someone pointed out that cheese doesn't actually have a lot of lactose in it and I have to try it with milk so I could still be lactose intolerant I guess we're gonna find out with my phase two of finding the perfect diet after I do keep it took about two days for me to feel like I was pretty much fully recovered from the refeed so my stomach was feeling okay didn't really want to poop myself all the time and now it's been almost a week and I'd say my digestion is back to normal for the first few days I had a lot of nutrient dense liquidy kind of things so I had a lot of green juices I attempted to have a lot of bone broths, but that didn't really go super well. And then I slowly reintroduced solid foods. I had some eggs, some avocado, and then I had some bacon like a few days ago, and now I'm pretty much back to normal and can eat whatever I want. So that has been my transition from my three-day fast into the keto diet. If you've seen my The Best Diet for Weight Loss video, you will know that keto is part three of phase one of my finding the perfect diet journey. If you do keto in a certain way, it can actually be really good for your gut because it almost forces you to cut out a bunch of food groups that a lot of people tend to be really intolerant to. So I'm kind of using this as an extension of my gut reset diet. So what is keto? For those of you who don't know, the ketogenic diet is super low carb, moderate protein, and very high fat. And the theory behind it is this. When you're eating a standard American diet or a regular diet that doesn't restrict carbs, your body uses those carbs and breaks them down into glucose for fuel. But if you severely restrict your carbs, your body is forced to use another option. And what it does is it breaks down fat into ketones and uses ketones to fuel your body. And ketones are actually your body's and your brain's preferred energy source. It's a much more clean burning fuel in your body. If you will. So keto actually has a ton of different benefits for your brain, which I will get into in a different video. If you guys are interested, let me know. But essentially what happens when you're on the ketogenic diet is that if you're in any amount of caloric deficit, your body will draw from the fat stores in your body and break those down for fuel. So you have this constant fuel source. You don't feel the crash from if you have a bunch of carbs and then, you know, you burn through your glucose, you crash, you get hangry, etc. But if you're burning ketones, you won't have that crash because you have that constant fuel source. The ultimate goal with keto would be to achieve metabolic flexibility where your body can go back and forth easily between burning glucose and ketones for fuel. I probably won't achieve that with keto this time because I'm not going to be doing it for super long before I move on to phase two. But ultimately, I would love to go back to keto as long as this goes relatively well and work towards achieving metabolic flexibility. So, so far, it's been about a week of me being in ketosis. If you count one of the days that I was fasting where I made it into ketosis. Right now the macros that I'm trying to hit are approximately between 20 to 30 grams of net carbs, so that's all of the carbs minus the fiber, about 60 grams of protein, and the rest of my calories being made up of fat. Right now I'm trying to keep my carbs pretty much as low as possible and keep my protein pretty low as well because if you do have excess protein, that will actually be broken down into glucose, and so your body will start running on the glucose rather than the ketones. So I'm trying to keep both of those really low because I don't know the thresholds for my own body as to where it would send me out of ketosis. So as I do this more and more and learn more about my body and what might kick me out of ketosis, I might be able to up my carbs a little bit, up my protein a little bit, depending on my training, but I'm gonna have to figure that out as I go along. The hardest thing that I found so far is trying to keep my protein down. I feel like any food that's really high in fat also tends to be like moderate to high in protein, except for like oils, but I'm not just gonna drink oil and avocado. That's another thing. I never thought, like I've always loved avocado. 
I never thought I would enjoy just eating a plain avocado, but I have grown to love that in like the last three days. Oh my God, an avocado by itself is just the best snack ever. I did plan out about five weeks of keto meal prep with my macros being exactly where I want them to be. So thankfully I won't have to worry about it during the week. I'm a little bit more worried on the weekends when I kind of have to wing it. But this will be a learning process for me and I will take you guys along as I learn things and share what I learn with you. Another thing that I'm gonna really try to be learning is how to incorporate more vegetables into a keto diet. And this kind of goes hand in hand with finding out my own tolerance for carbs and how many carbs I can eat before I get kicked out of ketosis. So to test those boundaries, I will start incorporating more vegetables into my diet and seeing what happens. But for now, I'm even kind of limiting my vegetables just to make sure I'm into ketosis and kind of get the hang of things. This is a case where I think a supplement like a greens powder would actually be a really good thing. I did order one. It should have been here by now. I don't know where it is, but I'm hoping it shows up soon so I can at least take a greens powder that has very minimal carbs but still gets me a ton of nutrients. So as I've started to dive into this, I've joined a few keto Facebook groups and the thing that really stands out to me about keto is how everyone seems to have their own definition of keto. In the broad sense of the term, doing a ketogenic diet literally just means that your body is in ketosis. Like for me, that's going to be my basic definition and then I'm going to work with my own principles of nutrition in order to keep myself in ketosis. For example, one of the groups I'm in says artificial sweeteners are bad but you can have these sugar alcohols and I'm just like, I, uh-uh, I won't be having sugar alcohols because that no. I've also seen a discrepancy about the vegetables. Some people say you don't have to count any dark leafy greens, just have as much as you want, don't worry about it. And then some people say that you need to count every single carb and gram of fiber and come up with your total net carbs. And then some people say that you should count the total carbs for everything and not subtract the fiber unless it's dark leafy greens. So what I'm gonna do is just eat the way that I eat, eat healthfully, try to eat whole unprocessed foods, and just make sure that I stay in ketosis. As I learn more about my body and ketosis, I will gradually be able to adjust my diet accordingly. So over the last few days, I've just felt totally normal. I haven't experienced any sort of keto flu. I think part of that might be because I did a three day fast before and that just threw me straight into ketosis and I didn't have to adjust. But part of that is also because I tend to eat lower carb anyway, because I love fats and I feel really good when I eat a lot of fat. And also the gut reset diet that I did for three weeks before my fast was very low carb. It definitely wasn't close to ketosis, but it was even lower carb than I tend to eat. So I guess I did kind of slowly transition into ketosis, but either way, whatever I did, I haven't experienced any keto flu. So I think that just about sums up why I'm doing keto slash my first few days in keto slash my extent of knowledge about keto. But today is meal prep day and I will be showing you my first ever keto meal prep. And I'm actually really excited about it. I think it's gonna be pretty darn good. It's pretty darn healthy if I do say so myself. So let's go do some meal prepping. Okay, so we are doing my very first week of keto meal prep. So this week we are having a keto oatmeal, and by keto oatmeal, it's made mostly out of hemp seeds with some almonds and coconut, and of course, chocolate, because I love chocolate. And then for my second big meal, I'm having a chicken wrap. And then for snacks, I'm having some peely nut butter. And then for my other snack, I'm having some cheddar cheese that I'm super excited about. So this meal prep comes out to 1,643 calories with 53 grams of carbs, but 25 grams of fiber, so it's 28 net carbs, 68 grams of protein, and 134 grams of fat, so that leaves me with a little bit of wiggle room for any snacks if I want to add it. So without further ado, let's get cooking. The base of this keto oatmeal is hemp seeds and coconut. So we're gonna do three tablespoons of hemp seed in each. So then for the coconut, I am doing just regular, like very shredded coconut unsweetened obviously because that has a lot of carbs and then I try to get coconut that doesn't have the like additives in it to preserve the color to help absorb some of the liquid we have one tablespoon of chia seeds and then to add a little pizzazz I'm doing two teaspoons of chopped almonds and then of course I need it to be chocolatey so I'm gonna add a little bit of cacao powder you can pretty much do this to taste because cacao powder doesn't have that many carbs or anything in it obviously you don't want to put in like a ton of cacao powder because that'll mess you up but then we're gonna do one and a half teaspoons approximately and then the last thing to add a little texture just like a pinch of cacao nibs okay so this is the dry base of our keto oatmeal it's there's nothing oatmeal-y about it but this is the closest you're gonna get to oatmeal on keto now it's time for the wet ingredients i'm going for a like peanut butter chocolate flavor so i'm gonna be putting in some not so cashew almond brazil nut flaxseed chia seed hazelnut pumpkin sea salt nut butter and then i'm also gonna be putting in some simply balanced 
creamy peanut butter. And both of these are great, no added sugars. It's literally just like the nuts and the seeds and things. So we're gonna start with one cup of canned coconut milk. I love canned coconut milk because it's so much higher in fat. So for keto, canned coconut milk, that's the way to go. And so when I measure this out, I'm actually going to just put all of the solid part into the cup first so that I maximize the amount of fat that I'm getting from here and don't get as much of the actual um, coconut water, which is higher in sugar and lower in fat. So we're maximizing the fat, which means the counting the macros will be a little bit off because when you count the macros of the can, it counts all of it. Um, but we're just taking the fattier part. So overall, it will probably be a little bit more calorically dense, but it'll also be higher in fat, so you won't really have to worry about it throwing you out of ketosis or anything. Mm. The coconut is essentially a little bit more than three tablespoons per day, and then for the almond milk, we're doing one tablespoon per day, so a little bit over a quarter cup. For the nut butters, I'm going to do one tablespoon per day. I want slightly more peanut buttery, so I'm going to go with three tablespoons of the peanut butter and two tablespoons of the nuts milk. And now we blend. Each keto oatmeal is going to get just over a third of a cup of liquid, so I'm going to measure it out into two of these, and then the rest of this I'm just going to keep in the fridge and portion out the night before. On to preparing dinner. Gonna grill this chicken in this little grill that my mom just brought me, which I'm really excited about. Gonna do one with just salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna put salt and pepper, chili powder, and paprika on the other one. And then this is all the fixins. So it's going in these super cool coconut wraps from Thrive Market. They're turmeric flavor, they're mostly just like coconut meat, so they're super high in fat, which is great. Got some feta cheese. I'm actually putting like half of a container in each of these wraps. An entire avocado, I'll probably eat half the avocado on the side and put half in the wrap. Half of a bell pepper in each, some lettuce, some mayo, and gonna, oh, put avocado oil on the chicken. Again, I'm really bad at remembering to put my cooking oils into my fitness pal, so I've actually not done that yet, so that'll add a couple, I don't know, maybe 100 calories or so. Since all these are super fresh ingredients, I'm not gonna prepare them all right now. I'm just gonna prepare all of the ingredients so that I can throw it together the day of. So the lettuce, I'm just gonna wash the lettuce and then I'll wrap it up and then the day of, when I want to eat it, I'll just break off a few pieces of lettuce and put it in the wrap. I'm gonna wash these two and then cut them up into tiny slices and package them individually for the five separate days. So just slice them up, put them in baggies. I'm gonna put half of this container of feta cheese into each of my little tiny individual containers. Everything that is possible to prep for dinner has been prepped and now it is time for the snacks. The first thing is peely nut butter and I heard about peely nuts just like five days ago on the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast and these are insane for keto. They're super high in fat. They have 19 grams of fat for every four total grams of carbs and two grams of protein. So this is just like a keto dieter's dream. Plus it's in a chocolate flavor with some maca and lucuma. So this is, this is freaking amazing. It's also really expensive and I didn't realize how small the jar would be. So I'm kind of sad, but really cool. I essentially decided to have a fifth of this container every day and I really don't want to break this down into smaller things because like there'd be like one tablespoon just packed away by itself. So what I'm going to do is just bring this jar to work with me and have it live in the fridge at work. And so when it's time for my snack, I will just go take a little spoon, dip into it, maybe smear it on some of my cheese. And yeah, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to meal prep just this little tiny thing of nut butter. And then I have this cheese and I am so excited about this cheese. When I started planning out my keto meal plans, I was finding it really hard to hit all my macros without incorporating dairy. And I was like, there's just so much about dairy in general that I'm not a big fan of, like all of the added hormones and everything like that. But I did some research and I found this cheese company that is sold near me. And all of the cows are pasture raised, grass fed year round. And this is also raw cheese. So it's not even pasteurized. Because this is raw cheese, I probably shouldn't take it out of the packaging and just like let it sit around for a while. So what I just did is I made like tick marks in the package for ounces. So I just, this is eight ounces of cheese. So I just divided it into eight. So I'm just gonna do the same thing that I'm doing with the peely butter. I'm just gonna bring this whole bunch of cheese to work, put it in a plastic baggie. And then we have like forks and knives at the office. So I will just cut off an ounce and eat that. 
as a snack. So this is the finished meal prep. For breakfast, we have the keto oatmeal with the liquid that I will be dumping in the night before. I have my extra liquid here still in the blender so I can just blend it up and make sure it's still like all nice and blendy. So I have two of these ready to go in jars and then three of these that will be transferred into the jars as these jars become vacated. For a snack, I am taking the entire little jar of peely and nut butter to work. Just gonna have a little spoonful of that and this entire thing of cheese, I'll just cut off an ounce. And then for dinner, I will be taking one coconut wrap, putting in some lettuce, this is some extra lettuce that's wrapped up so it doesn't get soggy, a tablespoon and a half of mayo, then I will have one avocado with a bell pepper, chicken, and feta cheese. I've never used these before, so I'm hoping that they actually wrap up nicely, but if not, I might just have it pizza style. The one thing that I've noticed about keto so far is that the meal sizes are kind of depressing, and it's because like fats are so calorically dense that the meals have to be smaller but I like eating huge meals. So I'm kind of hoping that four or five weeks of this will actually help me get out of the mindset of wanting to eat a lot and wanting to make sure that I'm snacking if I don't feel really full because these meals, they should fill me up, but it won't feel like I'm eating a lot. And the fact that I don't feel like I'm eating a lot should not dictate whether or not I eat more if that makes sense. It should be whether or not I feel hungry and whether or not I've actually eaten a good amount of calories. So that is one thing that I am really hoping to get out of keto other than the whole like keto experience. But yeah, I'd say that for my first keto meal prep, this went fairly well. I'm looking forward to eating this throughout the week and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you guys do keto, if you have any tips down in the comments. If you have any questions about what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, let me know also down in the comments. Give this video a little thumbs up if you liked it because it really does support me and my channel and I really appreciate it very much. Share this video with all of your keto buddies, keto friends, keto family and all of your friends and family and neighbors etc subscribe and hit the little notification button below so you don't miss any videos and i will see you very soon bye